And welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lorry Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. So it's going to reflect on what we talked about. We had our WWE NXT review. We had our AEW Dynamite 250 preview. We had our top 10 uh, men's wrestling uh, superstars. And now we're going to talk about our top 10 women superstars. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time on the GSMC Sports Network. Here to talk about what you guys love, what I love, professional wrestling. So without further ado, let's talk about these top 10 amazing women in professional wrestling. All right, guys, at number 10, I have I have a Nia Jax. I got to be honest, I have Nia Jax. Nia Jax, I feel like, you know, ultimately kind of uh, kind of align, aligning herself with Tiffany Stratton, the Money in the Bank winner. Well, before that, she, you know, we didn't know she was going to be the Money in the Bank winner. But when Nia Jax won the Queen of the Ring tournament, I wanted to kind of see her just kind of get rowdy. Just wanted to see her, like, use her crown, you know, kind of like to her advantage. Kind of like what Booker T did when he won the, you know, when he was king of Booker. But ultimately, like, Nia Jax, I feel like still has not lived up to her full potential inside WWE. She's a one-time WWE, I think, SmackDown champion? Don't quote me on that. SmackDown champion. Uh, obviously, she lost it when uh, Liv Morgan cashed in her no, and when Alexa when Alexa Bliss cashed in her Money in the Bank when she had a match with Ronda Rousey. So, um, Nia Jax, I have at number ten, and honestly, you know, my man Anthony Masano Mob, uh, I Britt Baker was an honorable mention. I love Britt Baker. Uh, when she came back to uh, AEW at Forbidden Door, you know, even I was kind of shocked. I was like, you know, it's kind of cool to kind of see her come back. Uh, interesting to kind of seem like if she's the one to kind of dethrone Mercedes Monet from the, you know, the the high she's been on for so long. Uh, so I want to see Britt Baker do it. I want to see Britt Baker become, you know, return to the face of AEW. Obviously, during her hiatus, there was a lot of, you know, panic, a lot of panic going on between the women's division. Obviously, you did have a lot of top superstars like Willow of Nightingale, like, uh, you know, like Tony Storm, like, um, you know, um, oh, not Stephanie Vicor, the other uh, Latina, oh, God. Thunder Rosa, Thunder Rosa was really, really good. I love Britt Baker. I think, you know, she was one of the honorable mentions. At number nine, I had the WWE Women's Champion, Bailey. Bailey, I, you know, I, I like Bailey. I do like Bailey. Love her as a baby face more than a heel. As a heel, I feel like, you know, I was kind of shocked to find out that uh, Bailey kind of spoke to outside sources saying that she was the one to ultimately initiate the heel turn. But her as a baby face, it's just better. It's just better a thousand and ten percent. Uh, obviously, last um, last Friday Night SmackDown, you saw uh, Nia Jax saying that uh, she got that BBL, you know what I mean? Like, so crazy. So, you know, it was kind of crazy because, like, when you look on Twitter after uh, SmackDown, that that was what was trending. That was what was trending. Bailey BBL, you know, kind of crazy. You know, if you don't know, then Google it. I'm not going to tell you here on this podcast because we are uh, we are PG. We are we're kid friendly here on this podcast. Uh, PG-13, PG-13. Although I feel like when WWE moves to Netflix, I feel like, oh, we should go up to uh, PG-13. You know, I'm just kidding. Rated R. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. No, don't. We're not going to do that. Uh, so at number nine, I got my girl Bailey. At number eight, it did not take Willow of Nightingale too long to bounce back from her TBS championship loss at double or nothing against Mercedes Monet. She won a vacated championship that was vacated by current WWE superstar, obviously Stephanie Vercure, who was signed by WWE. Now uh, she's a champion once again. And I, you know, I, I love the championship belt on Willow. Definitely think they shouldn't have gave Mercedes Monet a TBS championship so so quickly, but obviously that's my you know opinion thousand and ten percent. So love seeing Willow in this you know this successful kind of nature. You know what I mean? At number seven, I got Jordan Grace, the TNA Knockouts World Champion. Ever since she kind of made it to WWE, I feel like it's kind of fizzled out. And I'm you know I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to you know. I'm trying to be a bird and I'm not trying to kick down Jordan Grace's run uh, in TNA to be like, oh, she's only important if she takes on WWE superstars. No, that's not the case. I feel like ultimately, I feel like NXT should have did a lot more by Jordan Grace. Like, you know, Tana Paxley, eh, she's cool. She's all right. Izzy Dame, she's a powerhouse. She's a promising star. Yeah, she's all right. But I feel like you could have had somebody bigger. Like maybe you could have had Jada Parker go over there. Maybe Mi Chen. Maybe Soruka. 
Maybe you could have had like Kaylani Jordan defend the annex. You know, like you maybe you could have had something bigger. Uh, I, you know, I was kind of a little ticked off to find out the way that, you know, T the NXT, you know, kind of gave TNA these superstars to take on Jordan Grace. So, you know, definitely think she deserves more, but she's on my list. Uh, so yeah, at number six, I have Bi uh, Billy Starks, Billy Starks of Ring of Honor, the Ring of Honor World Women's Television Champion. I, you know, she recently won a Proving Ground match last week. Uh, she's going to defend her championship at Death Before Dishonor, July 26th. So I'm interested to kind of find out, you know, what happens. She's a formidable champion. Very, very good. She, you know, she every single time she steps into the ring, she gives it all she got, man. She, you know, she cuts good promos. She's excited to talk to the fans. She's like that baby. She's, a, you know, she's on, you know, she's with MIT, with Athena. You know, they're like this heel group. But ultimately, you know, it's kind of hard to hate her. It's kind of hard to hate her. At number six, I have Billy Starks. At number five, I have Mercedes Monet. Mercedes Monet, um, a double champion. She's the New Japan professional. She's the New Japan. She's the New Japan, a professional wrestling a woman strong champion. Also with a TBS champion. I feel like she has to lose one pretty soon. Would be interesting to find out if tonight's the night she loses to Nyla. You know Nyla Rose. Uh, I you know I would kind of I I would prefer it. I would love to see Mercedes Monet at least drop one title like. You know, you got signed to the, the AEW doesn't necessarily mean that you decide you, you deserve the whole entire world. At number four, making her debut on my list. And I might be, you know, obviously I'm, you know, I'm a huge sucker for, uh, you know, blood being shed on professional wrestling because I'm a huge Attitude Era kind of guy. At number three, I have, at number four, I have Mariah May. Number four, I have Mariah May. Her last promo with Tony Storm was just a beauty after winning the Owen Hart Cup Championship Cup. And now she has the number one contendership to take on Tony Storm at AEW All In at Wembley Stadium. I'm a sucker for that. Like it was a great promo. Tony Storm is gushing out blood. You're not used to seeing women in wrestling just being torn to bits. So 1010% Mariah May is the future of AEW. I mentioned before she's a promising superstar. And the only reason why I kind of have her at number four is because AEW has high hopes for her. Much like, you know, a lot of professional wrestling, um, you know, uh, social media landscapes and platforms and stuff like that. You know, you look on any, you look on any Instagram, you look on any Twitter, look on any TikTok, like, you know, you look up Mariah May, you just see this post and it has like over like a hundred thousands of views and stuff like that. It's a, Mariah May is a big deal and she's going to be great. At number three, I have Roxanne Perez. Roxanne Perez um, to defeat Lola Vice at uh, Heat Wave. Had to use five pop rocks. Love Roxanne Perez. One of the best NXT Women's Champion of all time. She was talking about it in a promo where she, she could possibly have a more illustrious career than Charlotte Flair. You know, I'm not too quiet. You know, I'm not too quick to... Uh, to bite on that or drink that Kool-Aid just yet. But she is number one. She's she's definitely one of the best uh, NXT superstars. Definitely so promising. She's, you know, like Swerve Strickland, she's defended her belt to a crap ton. To a crap ton. You can't really, uh, you know, discredit her ability to defend that championship. A lot of times you have someone win the championship, then they kind of use out-of-this-world tactics, you know, disqualifications. Somebody interferes in the match and, you know, she wins. But Roxanne Perez, she wins them clearly. She cleanly and clearly. So at uh, number three, I have Roxanne Perez. At number two, I have Tony Storm. Tony Storm was at number one, but Tony Storm, uh, you know, after being dismantled by Mariah May, I was like, all right. I kind of know what AEW, the way AEW wants to take in the direction of the women's division. Obviously, Tony Storm has been on the mountaintop, has been on the top of the steeple, top of the stoop for the longest time. It's time for a change. It's time for a change. And I feel like this is going to be something that's, uh, you know, kind of like something that's going to be introduced here. Number one, did not take long. Did not take long. Ray Ripley returns to WWE Monday Night Raw. Calls out Liv Morgan. Calls out Dominic Mysterio. Puts the Judgment Day on notice. Why is Carlito in our clubhouse? And then also you have um, Jay Uso trying to holler at her. And, you know, it was crazy. It was crazy. A thousand and ten percent. And um, I don't know. It's just, uh, you know, I love Ray Ripley. Ray Ripley, a thousand and ten percent. She's, uh, you know, she's going to get her championship back. And it's, uh, you know, it's going to be pretty crazy. And I got another... Uh, Comment, are your rankings only female wrestlers from the American companies? 
who are your animal vengeance, animal vengeance, uh, or any of them from Japan? I do know a little bit about New Japan Professional Wrestling. Wish I knew a little bit more. I gotta be honest. Uh, once again, love the you know, love the feedback, love the criticism and stuff like that. Definitely, like if you have a couple of top tens, you know, give me a couple of New Japan Professional Wrestling superstars, and I would love, absolutely love, a thousand and ten percent to kind of look them up to see if they belong on this list. But you know, one of those things, and it you know kind of burns me kind of hates me to say but uh, you know wwe in the limelight it is and the juggernaut it is um you know it's you know it's uh i don't want to say it's easier to put wwe superstars on this list uh but you know it's you know it's power rankings it's power rankings it's you know those who have great title runs great promos promising futures and stuff like that definitely lucha libre as well i you know CMLL, uh, you know, their new partnership with Tony Khan and AEW should be pretty badass. I would love to see more wrestling from Mexico. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I try to watch all the wrestling I can. I got to be honest, you know, that signing up for, uh, you know, Access TV to watch TNA, Ring of Honor, Honor Club, trying to find out a way to, to watch New Japan Professional Wrestling and stuff like that without, you know, watching highlights on YouTube and stuff like that. So, oh my God, it's just so much wrestling, so much wrestling. And I and I love it. I love it a thousand and ten percent. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys, do not go anywhere. We're going to move on to our fifth and final segment. We're going to talk about our Wednesday weekly wrestling news so grab grab your popcorn grab your favorite snack grab your favorite drink we're going to talk about the breaking news headlines within the professional wrestling industry so hey do not go anywhere 